Would you like free audiobooks? Click the link in the description. Question 1. A 28-year-old female client reports intermittent, sharp pelvic pain for six months, worsening during menstruation. On examination, the nurse notes a retroverted uterus and nodules in the posterior vaginal fornix. Which condition should the nurse suspect? A. Endometriosis. B. Pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. C. Ovarian cysts. D. Uterine fibroids. Correct answer. A. Endometriosis. Rationale, endometriosis is characterized by the presence of endometrial tissue outside the uterus, which can cause pain, especially during menstruation. A retroverted uterus and nodules in the posterior vaginal fornix are common findings. PID typically presents with a more acute onset of symptoms. Ovarian cysts and uterine fibroids may cause pelvic pain but are less likely to present with these specific findings. Question 2. A nurse is providing care for a client diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS, which statement by the client indicates a need for further education. A. I should maintain a healthy weight to manage my condition. B. I understand that I'm at an increased risk for developing diabetes. C. Taking oral contraceptives will cure my PCOS. D. I will monitor my menstrual cycle and report any irregularities. Correct answer. C. Taking oral contraceptives will cure my PCOS. Rationale, oral contraceptives are a treatment option to manage symptoms of PCOS, such as menstrual irregularities and hirsutism, but they do not cure the condition. Educating the client about the chronic nature of PCOS and the importance of symptom management is crucial. Question 3. A nurse is counseling a couple undergoing infertility evaluation. When explaining semen analysis, which factor should the nurse emphasize is most indicative of fertility potential? A. Volume. B. Liquefaction time. C. pH. D. Sperm motility. Correct answer. D. Sperm motility. Rationale, sperm motility, or the ability of sperm to move efficiently, is a critical factor in fertility. While volume, liquefaction time, and pH are important parameters in semen analysis, sperm motility directly influences the sperm's ability to reach and fertilize an egg. Question 4. A client with a history of genital herpes is pregnant. What is the nurse's priority teaching point for this client as she approaches labor? A. You will need to have a cesarean section. B. Antiviral medication will be administered during the third trimester. C. Genital herpes increases the risk of miscarriage. D. Herpes transmission to the fetus is most likely during the first trimester. Correct answer. B. Antiviral medication will be administered during the third trimester. Rationale, antiviral medication may be administered during the third trimester to reduce the risk of an outbreak at the time of delivery. While a cesarean section may be recommended if there is an active outbreak at the time of labor, it is not a necessity for all herpes-positive pregnancies. Question 5. A nurse is planning care for a client with a diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis. Which intervention should the nurse include? A. Prescribe antifungal medication. B. Recommend soaking in a hot bath daily. C. Educate on the importance of completing prescribed antibiotic therapy. D. Advise to use scented feminine hygiene products to manage symptoms. Correct answer. C. Educate on the importance of completing prescribed antibiotic therapy. Rationale. Bacterial vaginosis is treated with antibiotics. Educating the client on the importance of completing the full course of antibiotics is crucial to ensure the infection is fully treated and to prevent recurrence. Question 6. During a well-woman exam, a client expresses concern about her risk for cervical cancer due to her mother's history of the disease. 
What is the nurse's best response? A. Cervical cancer is not hereditary, so your risk is not increased. B. You should get a pap smear annually to screen for cervical cancer. C. The HPV vaccine can significantly reduce your risk of developing cervical cancer. D. Only women over 50 are at risk for cervical cancer. Correct answer. C. The HPV vaccine can significantly reduce your risk of developing cervical cancer. Rationale, human papillomavirus, HPV, is a significant risk factor for cervical cancer. The HPV vaccine can greatly reduce the risk of cervical cancer, making it a key preventive measure, especially for those with a family history of the disease. Annual pap smears are recommended based on individual risk factors and guidelines rather than a blanket recommendation for all. Question 7. A client is diagnosed with primary dysmenorrhea. Which pathophysiological mechanism should the nurse explain is most likely contributing to the client's condition? A. Uterine fibroids. B. Ovarian cysts. C. Elevated levels of prostaglandins. D. Endometrial polyps. Correct answer. C. Elevated levels of prostaglandins. Rationale. Primary dysmenorrhea is often caused by elevated levels of prostaglandins, which lead to increased uterine contractions and pain. Uterine fibroids, ovarian cysts, and endometrial polyps are more commonly associated with secondary dysmenorrhea. Question 8. A nurse is discussing contraceptive options with a client who has a history of deep vein thrombosis, DVT. Which contraceptive method should the nurse recommend avoiding? A. Intrauterine device, IUD. B. Condoms. C. Oral contraceptives, containing estrogen. D. Diaphragm. Correct answer. C. Oral contraceptives, containing estrogen. Rationale, estrogen-containing oral contraceptives can increase the risk of thrombosis and are generally contraindicated in individuals with a history of DVT. Non-hormonal methods like IUDs, particularly the copper IUD, condoms, and diaphragms do not increase the risk of thrombosis and are safer alternatives for these individuals. Question 9. A client presents with a painful genital ulcer and lymphadenopathy. The nurse suspects primary syphilis. Which diagnostic test should the nurse anticipate ordering? A. Herpes simplex virus, HSV, culture. B. Human papillomavirus, HPV, test. C. Rapid plasma reagent, RPR. D. Papanicolaou, PAP, smear. Correct answer. C. Rapid plasma reagent, RPR. Rationale, the RPR test is used to screen for syphilis. It detects antibodies produced in response to the Treponema pallidum bacterium. HSV culture is used for herpes diagnosis, while HPV tests and pap smears are used for HPV detection and cervical cancer screening, respectively. Question 10. A nurse is caring for a client who reports a sudden, severe headache and visual disturbances three days postpartum. The client's blood pressure is 150 over 100 millimeters of mercury. What is the most likely diagnosis? A. Preeclampsia. B. Gestational hypertension. C. Postpartum eclampsia. D. Chronic hypertension. Correct answer. C. Postpartum eclampsia. Rationale, postpartum eclampsia can develop in the days after delivery and is characterized by seizures or coma in a patient with preeclampsia. Symptoms include headache, visual disturbances, and high blood pressure. Immediate medical intervention is required to prevent serious complications. Question 11. A 22-year-old female client reports a three-month history of irregular menstrual cycles and excessive facial hair growth. Which hormonal imbalance should the nurse suspect? A. Hyperthyroidism. B. 
hyperprolactinemia. C. Polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS. D. Premature ovarian failure. Correct answer. C. Polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS. Rationale, PCOS is characterized by hormonal imbalances that can lead to symptoms such as irregular menstrual cycles, hirsutism, excessive hair growth, acne, and obesity. Hyperthyroidism, hyperprolactinemia, and premature ovarian failure may also affect menstrual cycles, but are less commonly associated with hirsutism as a presenting symptom. Question 12. A nurse is caring for a client undergoing treatment for severe endometriosis. The client asks why GnRH agonists are being used. What is the nurse's best response? A. They help by stimulating the growth of the endometrial tissue outside the uterus. B. They increase estrogen levels, which reduces the pain associated with endometriosis. C. They induce a temporary menopause-like state, which may decrease endometrial tissue growth and reduce symptoms. D. They are used as a fertility treatment to increase your chances of pregnancy. Correct answer. C. They induce a temporary menopause-like state, which may decrease endometrial tissue growth and reduce symptoms. Rationale, GnRH agonists are used in the treatment of endometriosis to reduce estrogen levels, thereby inducing a temporary menopause-like state. This reduction in estrogen levels can decrease the growth of endometrial tissue and alleviate symptoms associated with endometriosis. They are not used to stimulate endometrial growth, increase estrogen levels for pain reduction, or as a fertility treatment in this context. Question 13. A client who recently underwent a hysterectomy reports symptoms of hot flashes, vaginal dryness, and mood swings. Which intervention should the nurse prioritize? A. Prescribe antidepressants. B. Initiate hormone replacement therapy, HRT, after evaluating risks and benefits. C. Recommend increased physical activity and a healthy diet. D. Advise the use of over-the-counter lubricants for vaginal dryness only. Correct answer. B. Initiate hormone replacement therapy, HRT after evaluating risks and benefits. Rationale, the symptoms described are indicative of menopausal symptoms, which can occur following a hysterectomy, especially if the ovaries are removed. HRT can be effective in managing these symptoms. The physician's decision to start HRT should involve a thorough discussion of the benefits and risks. While antidepressants, lifestyle changes, and lubricants may help with some symptoms, HRT addresses the hormonal root of the symptoms. Question 14. During a prenatal visit, a pregnant client asks about ways to prevent perineal tears during childbirth. What is the nurse's best response? A. Perineal tears cannot be prevented, but they heal quickly on their own. B. Performing perineal massage starting from the 34th week of pregnancy can help reduce the risk. C. Avoiding epidural anesthesia during labor will prevent perineal tears. D. Perineal tears only occur with first pregnancies. Correct answer. B. Performing perineal massage starting from the 34th week of pregnancy can help reduce the risk. Rationale. Perineal massage in the weeks leading up to childbirth can increase the elasticity of the perineum, potentially reducing the risk of tears during delivery. The statement that tears cannot be prevented is misleading, as there are strategies to reduce their likelihood. The choice of pain management, such as epidural anesthesia, and the number of pregnancies do not directly determine the risk of perineal tears. Question 15. A nurse is providing postpartum education to a new mother planning to breastfeed. Which statement by the client indicates an understanding of how to prevent mastitis? A. I will limit breastfeeding to once every four hours to prevent overstimulation. B. I should wear a tight-fitting bra to reduce milk production. C. I'll make sure to change the baby's position during feedings to empty all milk ducts. D. It's best to stop breastfeeding as soon as I feel any breast pain. 
Correct answer. C. I'll make sure to change the baby's position during feedings to empty all milk ducts. Rationale, changing the baby's position during feedings helps ensure that all milk ducts are emptied, reducing the risk of milk stasis and subsequent infection leading to mastitis. Limiting breastfeeding frequency, wearing a tight bra, and stopping breastfeeding at the first sign of pain are not recommended practices and can actually increase the risk of complications. Question 16. A 45-year-old client is considering hormone replacement therapy, HRT, for menopausal symptoms but is concerned about the risks. What is the nurse's most appropriate response? A. HRT is completely safe and has no associated risks. B. The benefits of HRT often outweigh the risks for women under 60 or within 10 years of menopause onset. C. You should only consider HRT if you're experiencing severe symptoms. D. Natural remedies are more effective and safer than HRT. Correct answer. B. The benefits of HRT often outweigh the risks for women under 60 or within 10 years of menopause onset. Rationale, HRT can be an effective treatment for menopausal symptoms and may offer benefits that outweigh the risks for certain women, particularly those under 60 or within 10 years of menopause onset. It's important to assess each individual's health history and symptom severity when considering HRT. The statement that HRT is completely safe overlooks the associated risks such as increased risk of certain cancers, and the efficacy of natural remedies varies and may not be more effective or safer than HRT. Question 17. A nurse is teaching a class on sexual health and STD prevention. Which statement accurately reflects a key point the nurse should emphasize? A. Oral contraceptives are effective in preventing STDs. B. Using latex condoms correctly every time you have sex can significantly reduce the risk of STDs. C. STDs can only be transmitted through sexual intercourse. D. Once you have been treated for an STD, you cannot get it again. Correct answer. B. Using latex condoms correctly every time you have sex can significantly reduce the risk of STDs. Rationale, the correct and consistent use of latex condoms is one of the most effective methods to reduce the risk of transmitting or acquiring sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. Oral contraceptives do not protect against STDs, and STDs can be transmitted through various means, not just sexual intercourse. It is also possible to be reinfected with an STD after treatment. Question 18. A client with a history of recurrent urinary tract infections, UTIs, asks the nurse for advice on prevention. What is the nurse's best recommendation? A. Limit fluid intake to decrease the frequency of urination. B. Urinate before and after sexual activity to help flush out bacteria. C. Use feminine hygiene sprays to decrease bacterial growth. D. Hold urine for long periods to strengthen bladder muscles. Correct answer. B. Urinate before and after sexual activity to help flush out bacteria. Rationale, urinating before and after sexual activity can help flush out bacteria that may enter the urethra during intercourse, reducing the risk of UTIs. Limiting fluid intake, using feminine hygiene sprays, and holding urine for long periods can actually increase the risk of UTIs. Question 19. A postmenopausal client is diagnosed with atrophic vaginitis. Which treatment option should the nurse discuss with the client? A. Systemic estrogen therapy. B. Topical estrogen therapy. C. Antibiotic treatment. D. Antifungal medication. Correct answer. B. Topical estrogen therapy. Rationale, atrophic vaginitis, a condition that can occur in postmenopausal women due to decreased estrogen levels, often responds well to topical estrogen therapy. This treatment helps replenish vaginal tissue health and moisture. 
Systemic estrogen therapy is not specifically aimed at treating atrophic vaginitis and may not be necessary. Antibiotics and antifungals are not appropriate treatments for atrophic vaginitis unless there is a concurrent infection. Question 20. A nurse is providing care to a client with a Bartholin cyst. Which statement by the client indicates an understanding of the management plan? A. I should apply heat to the area to increase blood flow and promote healing. B. I will need to take oral contraceptives to shrink the cyst. C. Surgery is the only option to remove the cyst. D. I should limit my physical activity until the cyst resolves. Correct answer. A. I should apply heat to the area to increase blood flow and promote healing. Rationale, applying warm compresses to the area of a Bartholin cyst can help promote blood flow, ease discomfort, and potentially aid in drainage and healing. Oral contraceptives are not used to treat Bartholin cysts. While surgery might be an option for recurrent or very large cysts, it is not the only treatment. Limiting physical activity is not necessarily required unless recommended by a healthcare provider for comfort or other specific reasons. Question 21. A 55-year-old female client is undergoing evaluation for osteoporosis. She is concerned about the impact of her early menopause at the age of 40 on her bone density. Which factor related to early menopause is most important in assessing her risk for osteoporosis? A. Decreased physical activity after menopause. B. Duration of postmenopausal period. C. Dietary calcium intake postmenopause. D. Family history of osteoporosis. Correct answer. B. Duration of postmenopausal period. Rationale The duration of the postmenopausal period, especially when menopause occurs prematurely, significantly impacts bone density due to the prolonged time without the protective effects of estrogen on bone health. While decreased physical activity, dietary calcium intake, and family history are important factors in overall bone health and osteoporosis risk, the length of time since menopause is a crucial factor for this client. Question 22. A client is scheduled for a vasectomy. During preoperative education, the nurse should emphasize which point. A. You will notice an immediate decrease in sexual function. B. Contraception is necessary until vasectomy effectiveness is confirmed by semen analysis. C. The procedure is reversible with guaranteed success. D. You will no longer produce sperm after the procedure. Correct answer. B. Contraception is necessary until vasectomy effectiveness is confirmed by semen analysis. Rationale. After a vasectomy, sperm may still be present in the semen for several months. It is important to use another form of contraception until a semen analysis confirms the absence of sperm. Vasectomy does not immediately affect sexual function, nor does it stop the production of sperm, it prevents sperm from being released with semen. Reversal procedures exist, but do not guarantee fertility restoration. Question 23. A nurse is counseling a client diagnosed with HPV about the potential long-term complications. Which complication is most important to highlight? A. Cervical cancer. B. Infertility. C. Chronic pelvic pain. D. Recurrent urinary tract infections. Correct answer. A. Cervical cancer. Rationale, human papillomavirus, HPV, particularly certain high-risk strains, is a major risk factor for the development of cervical cancer. While HPV can have various impacts on reproductive health, the link between HPV and cervical cancer is a critical point of education for affected clients. Infertility, chronic pelvic pain, and recurrent urinary tract infections are not directly linked to HPV. Question 24. A client experiencing menopausal symptoms asks about the risks associated with hormone replacement therapy, HRT. Which risk should the nurse prioritize in her education? A. 
Immediate allergic reactions to HRT medications. B. Increased risk of cardiovascular disease and breast cancer. C. Severe acne and other skin disorders. D. Rapid weight gain within the first week of treatment. Correct answer. B. Increased risk of cardiovascular disease and breast cancer. Rationale, long-term use of certain types of HRT can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease and breast cancer. While there are other side effects and risks associated with HRT, the potential for serious conditions like cardiovascular disease and breast cancer should be a priority in discussions about HRT risks. Allergic reactions, acne, and rapid weight gain are less common and generally not the primary concerns with HRT. Question 25. A nurse is discussing contraceptive options with a client who has just given birth and is planning to breastfeed. Which contraceptive method is most appropriate to recommend? A. Combined oral contraceptives, estrogen and progestin. B. Progestin-only pill, mini-pill. C. Injectable contraceptives, Depo-Provera, starting immediately postpartum. D. Intrauterine device, IUD, insertion within the first week postpartum. Correct answer. B. Progestin-only pill, mini-pill. Rationale, for breastfeeding mothers, progestin-only contraceptives, mini-pill, are often recommended because they do not affect milk production as estrogen-containing contraceptives can. Injectable contraceptives and IUDs are also safe for breastfeeding mothers, but the timing of initiation may vary based on individual circumstances and provider recommendations. Combined oral contraceptives containing estrogen may reduce breast milk production and are generally not the first choice for breastfeeding mothers. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.